settling in, <clears throat> coming to your readiness to be present for this hour and a half of your journey, your practice, whatever it is for you today. The coming in to self, the self-support, and the ability to offer back from self-support. So my question is, <laughs> self-support. All right, we throw it around all the time. Uh, support yourself first, yada, yada. Well, what is it? How do we deeply support ourselves? We need to. Times are very hard. They're very hard for many. And yet here we sit, we sit the privileged. It's okay, it's okay. We sit together, we join together. We breathe and we move. So in a moment as we sit to, to meditate, I'm gonna bring you to a very, very early uh, structure of core self and in order to do so I'm going to use a couple of these anatomy models so this is your your embryology your your original coming into form you had no bones you had no you had nothing but a lot of <laughs> fluid events going on and as you were formed we're gonna, find, we're gonna find core here. We're gonna find very early, early core. So the most early core of you would be the beginning of the central channel. The beginning of, of core, before it had qualities and traits. It's latent uh, source of form. The form that is now you and your thinking, your feeling, and the, and the whole deal, everything about you, everything about the personal. So this begins right down here at what will eventually be the center of your pelvic floor. Right? So we talk about it a lot. There's a little structural body there. It's called the, the perineal body. And what happened, what happened initially as you were being formed, is that fluid down this bilaminar disc, two layers of cells, that's all we were, two layers of cells, and the fluids started to pour down from the top to the bottom, from the Shiva to the Shakti, right? from the pure being being drawn into action, sliding down to the center of the pelvic what floor, what will be the center of your pelvic floor, what will be the perineal body, then what happens? Well, this downward flow then coalesces at the perineal body, right in the center of what will be your pelvic floor, and from there, it begins to rise. It's called the primitive streak, and it's the beginning, it's the, the potentiality of the all of the form that is about to come. And it rises up from this lowest point into what is now the pit of your belly. And from there, it creates this structure called the notochord. The notochord becomes your central body. You have a front, you have a back, and you begin to have a center, and it's the notochord, right? And out of the notochord and the life force of the primitive streak, we develop all of these structures that also become our central body. So the, the fascial structures, all of the connective tissue, the stuff that moves you, and this is where we're going, and the importance of the fact that notochord tissues remain 
in your body, structurally, and in your consciousness through time, right here within you in parts of your vertebral column, actually in the discs. So this soft structure that we think of as our center, the weight-bearing bodies, the bodies of the vertebrae, still contain aspects of notochord. Key is that at that level, your spine is not rigid, it's not hard, it's not blocks. We don't stack our spines. Our spines are something more like this with a lot of space. So if you think of these as the bones, these are the bones, these are bones, the little pokey things, you know, all the stuff around your spine, the transverse processes, etc. Those are the bones. And then here in the space, that's the disc. And notochord and the consciousness of our initial core body remains in this structure in the soft tissues that support it. So you can see how I'm moving here. This is, this is the invitation of how to embody our own cores. What does this give us in our, our depth of feeling and our ability to handle the realities of what we're facing in the world right now, of what we're facing, of what the people who are suffering so deeply are facing. It's resilience. That's what we need. We need resilience to come back into self to find this deep support of core, pure awareness mixing into form, the Shiva and the Shakti coming in mixing into form, creating form that moves and acts in a resilient and undulating manner with power and with calm. This is what we need. <laughs> Don't you agree? <laughs> we need this, right? We need other things. We need clear action. <laughs> we, we need to be strong. There is no strength without resilience. There's only hardening. Your softness is your resilience. Strength. Okay. Putting it away so that we can explore this in our movement, which is one of the ways we bring these awarenesses into life. We explore it in our yoga practice. We weave the consciousness with the movement, and pretty soon we're beginning to say, oh yeah. And feel the ability to self-support and to act. So that's the end of the, the talking portion. And here we go into our embodied explorations. So if you'll just have a seat, and um, I'm gonna choose a Virasana today, but you can sit on your chair. Please have a chair near you. Absolutely have a chair. Um, if you have no chair, <laughs> absolutes are ridiculous. If you have no chair, you can use blocks or you can use the floor, or you can use the side of a couch. Whatever you have handy around um, will be fine. Okay, so I'm sitting here and often I will sit on a floor, but I'm sitting here in order to find that I'm allowing the very center of my pelvic floor. I'm not tipping, I'm not rounding, I'm allowing the very center, whoops, all good, just the spine model. Um, I'm allowing the very center of my pelvic floor to relate directly to the earth under me. This is how I find things. I set them up relationally, right? It's not all about me. Where do I move myself? It's like, oh, there's the earth. I'll go there. Ah. Take your hands onto your thighs and let's begin some very simple moving breath here. 
Breath moving inside it first, and then we'll bring it into the body. As you are inhaling, as if you are breathing right from the center of the pelvic floor, right from that perineal body, as you're inhaling, allow the, the pull, the breath to be drawn into your body from this very low structure, the primitive streak into the pit of the belly. Inhale, life force comes in. You can use a little bit of an ujjayi here to lengthen your breath. And exhale, ah, that's release. Inhale is take life in, draw it into you. Initial forming and your support right now. And exhale, let it roll out of you any way it does. Inhaling, accepting life as it is. This is not easy. And exhaling, releasing it out as it is. And draw it back in. In recognizing life as it actually is, we develop the ability to sculpt it. Without accepting it as it is, we are in constant resistance. Draw life in as it is. Notice, feel, and exhale. All right, now I'm gonna move just so you can see me, but you don't need to. As you are inhaling, a big reach. It doesn't need to go all the way up. Just take a big reach. If it goes all the way up, it's fine. And as you're exhaling, melt down. And as you're inhaling, you don't need to govern the movement of your arms too much. Just open them. And as you're exhaling, allow them to come back in. Inhaling, big reach. And exhaling, can you release life as it is, as the basis for effective action? Not to collapse, but to be strong. We're gonna twist this time. As you're inhaling, big reach out and up. And then spinning. You're spinning as if to observe something else outside of yourself. Whatever's there, look at it. Take it in with the breath and release it out as it is with the breath. You can touch down into your leg with your, your front hand and push. It could be either leg and yield, push into your leg. Take the force of that touching push into the earth, but don't collapse the pelvic floor. This is pulsing life inside of you. And here we go, coming back. As you're inhaling, release your arms, go out and up, take an extra breath or two. Mm, yield down through the ischial tuberosities. Those are your big bones that relate you to the earth. Inhale, ready to move again. And as you're exhaling, ah, releasing life oh, as it is. Holy moly. I don't know about you, but I often feel a big reluctance to do that. But I do find it's what builds my effective action. That's support underneath action. Inhale, take it in, allow your lungs to fill, lift the pelvic floor, and exhale, spinning. Mm -hmm. Pulsing. Allowing yourself to perhaps increase your inner sensing and feeling, if you dare. And here we go again as you're inhaling up, out, and around. And exhale, Anjali Mudra. Lovely. Let's come around to hands and knees. And the, the same basic inquiry Drawing in, releasing out. And now we're going to also look at the fact and the feeling that as we move, 
We're not doing, you see, a, a really bony thing like this. I'm not saying it's wrong, you know. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying that it could be different. It could be. Yeah? If we move from a thicker, more central awareness of spine, we get a softer and consciously, in terms of our consciousness, we get a deeper reality. So let's do it. As you're inhaling, yes, you wave out, of course, but don't shear. Keep that continuity here through a thick structure of connective tissues and space and fluid that is your core body, your spine. And your rounding. So this, this model that I have is not just an energetic model or something. This is about structure. Your spine is suspended within connective tissue. That's its reality. It doesn't need to be compressed onto itself. Those spaces that you saw in the joints there between the bones, between the bones, the spaces, that's in your body and, uh, and those discs are in there. So why are we stacking? Then we compress. Oh. Alrighty, now let's move in circles. So by the way, if this is hard on your wrist or anything, you just bring your, your arms, your forearms down. You can do anything just about in any position. So let's roll around here and mm, this feels good in the muscles of my back. I feel that, right? You feel that. Who has those muscles? Oh yeah, this core. Oh. And this core is both personal and universal. Can I feel that? The life force that lives within, how much of it is actually me, mine, and how much of it is universal life? That's a question to ask. It may take you deeper. It may not be your question. You get your own question. even breathing through my mouth a little bit. I'm taking in and making a sound as if I wanted to penetrate through the spaces in my spine, in my core. Create space in the core, space for action to develop. All right, and then let's bring it back. So you're coming into a child's posture here. Your version supports, not whatever, and rest it just a bit. So even in something that we might call a position, we think we're staying in a position, there's a ton of inner movement. The life force isn't static. If it stops, we're, we're in trouble. We want it to keep moving according to its nature different kinds of life force movements. All right, now come on up hands and knees again, or forearms, it's fine. And let's do this. Bring your right elbow in towards your left knee and squeeze around your belly a little bit. Feel for that spacious spine. And then as you're inhaling, reach out with right arm and back with left leg. Support this without hardening, but with that spacious core, spinal, nodal cord, and exhale, bring it back in and curl. Inhale, reach out, your rhythm. Exhale, curl. Inhale, reach out. Exhale, curl. Inhale out. Exhale, curl. And last time, hold there for a beat or two. Bring your head in line with your spine uh, without looking up, just right over the earth here. Let that soft core support all the way up through you and bring the hand down and the knee down. Other side. Inhale, ready to move and exhale, curl it in. Feel what you're doing. Inhale, reach out. And when you're ready, exhale, curl it.
your breath. Inhale, don't be afraid of pauses between breaths. They come, exhale, curl. Inhaling, and exhaling. Inhaling, this might be five, and retain, not retain the breath, but the posture. Allow yourself to look down, hollow through the mouth. Let the cave of your mouth support your skull. Find it. That space again. And exhale, bring it down. And rest. Bring the backs of your hands to stack onto your sacrum. And as you're down here, just pulse and squeeze through the body a little bit and let your tissues ripple. Just as if you're a big sea sponge, squeezing and breathing, ujjayi breathing. Stay with it. Mm -hmm. And from here, we're going to rise up. So exhale, squeeze in, feel the strength of the squeezing through your body. And as you're inhaling, coming all the way up to kneel standing. So push down, inhale, rise up, take your time, feel what we're doing. You have this spacious core. What does it give you? And exhale, down you go again. Hmm. You can do what you want with your arm. As you're inhaling, your rhythm, your time, feel it. And exhale, back down. Hmm. No right or wrong way. Please just move and enjoy reaching. Do you feel space in that core? Just like that tensegritus spine model I showed you. Ah, oh. once more, your rhythm. Mm hmm And then coming down. Good, and extend your arms out in front of you. We're gonna take one of those nice little, little twisting things here. So, Inhale, I'm gonna come down through my left and up with the right, spin open just a little bit. Inhale and exhale, thread the right arm under and lean down on it. Reach the tail away. So when we talk coccyx, we're talking the back end of this tube, this tensegritus tube. We're talking the back end of it is the coccyx. Where am I here? You know that. Mm, and if you're lucky, you can get your head on the floor or maybe a bolster or a blanket, but you could touch something there. It's all right if you don't. And then bring it up, inhale and bring it up. And we'll take the other side as you're exhaling, sweep it under and through. Feel the spinning in that core. And as you feel the spinning in the core, you're looking for the space. Not, not bone, but the space right now. Two more breaths. <clears throat> Good, and then bring yourself out of it and once again, extend your arms out in front of you. Now this time, on, with your arms extended, come up on your fingertips like tense. It's a little spidery thing. Slide your arms out. You don't need to come all the way down. Just create space there underneath your hand. Your fingers are touching. And create a line here, not a line, but a tube again, of, of space in the wrist. So that's not compressing, it's the same principle. You're not compressing your bones, but you're finding the space and the fluidity of the soft tissues around the bone. All right, now plant your hands down and yeah, pointing finger, ball, thumb, all that stuff to the middle finger. And then just come up, hands and knees. Here we go. You're going to turn the toes under. Inhale. 
slide back and forth, and then when you are ready, it's an exhale all the way up and into downward facing dog. Now, some of you are going to be using a chair for this. So even now, even here in downward dog, perhaps you wanna go get your chair and bring your hands onto it. Right? There's no need to compress your joints. How can that be good? If it helps you to keep space, use some props. All right, now from here, go ahead and walk your feet up to your hands. Mm -hmm. And I'm with the chair now, which is fine. And on an inhale, wave out, blocks, floor, whatever you want. And exhale, pour down. Take some breaths. Now don't hinge your spine up somewhere. Don't let your upper back round. You wanna feel the length of that space so that we can begin to find core body in the full length of the spine with its true nature, this spacious nature that it actually has. All right, and we're gonna come up. So take another inhale and wave out Bend your knees, most of you are gonna bend your knees, but you don't need to. Bring your hands to your thighs, bend knees or not. And as you're inhaling, open your arms like a big, huge parachute, and you rise, inhale, reach up. And exhale, right down the front, Anjali Mudra, standing easy, bring a hand to one pelvic bone, and as you're inhaling to rise, you see how I'm allowing this core to expand as I take an arm up. In this case, I'm not going so much from the periphery, which is not wrong. I'm right now, I'm moving from this core support right along this tensegratus spine. Okay, good. Now with an inhale, rise up, and it's like that compression or the arcing undoes itself. Ah, and the exhale is a release down. Don't compress. Cultivate the sense of space. And then here we go as you're inhaling. So the arm can go out to the side. Really doesn't matter. I'll do this one that way. Inhale, it's different, but it doesn't matter. Okay, and then uh, so when we're new at this, as, as most of us probably are, when we're new at this, the key to look at is not like, oh God, I need to memorize that structure. What is it he's holding? It's not like that. It's just that it's a thick, wide spine, and it's got a lot of space and fluid in it. Mm -hmm. And it includes the soft tissues around it. That's what I'm saying. You feel it? You keep it spacious. Here we go. As you're inhaling, come up. And exhaling, you melt it down. Excellent. And then release. Now this time you're gonna take both arms out and up and actually feel that, oh, I'm gonna lift up through the pelvic floor slightly as I inhale and bring the arms out and up. So here we go. As you're inhaling, pelvic floor lifting slightly, life force drawing in and exhale over. If you don't have the chair, it's fine. You can come right out and over, hands to your thighs. Inhale, slide out again. And exhale, round down over it. And inhaling, reach out and up. And do it again, your rhythm. Do it twice more. <clears throat> Play with it. Make it feel good. You're not gonna do something wrong. 
you can't do anything wrong. You can explore. Once more, wherever you are, you maybe slow it up a little bit. Maybe as you inhale, you really let the space come in there, circumferentially, three-dimensionally. And now standing. So the space is first within us, the space comes first. It does. Before we have this form and structure and undulating, we have space. So you want to find a deep core, you find an inner sense of space. What supports this space? Our density. What supports the living of this space? Our density. Tree posture. Yield down through the dents of one of your legs and let the opposite leg come up spinning. Take it as high or as low as you like, and if you like, reach up. What happens when you're thinking, now I'm balancing? Well, who's balancing for one thing? And can space actually lose its balance? I wonder. <laughs> That could support or a lot of a lot of balance. However, we need the density of the legs and the bone too. All of it. Inhale, let's release. As you're exhaling, bring it down. Of course, you know you can take a hand, a finger on your chair, right? To help you with this. Go down, dense, dense, dense. That's the bones. It's not even in your core core space, and then down, 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 and up you come, inhale, wherever you want it, toe can be on the floor, really. The inquiry is into these, these elements and who we are. Who are we at this very, very early developmental core? can be a little, a little difficult to find because it doesn't include your personal. It doesn't include all your wants and your dreams and your yada yada and, you know, this is right and this is wrong. It doesn't include that. It's just the space of light. Not everyone wants to do that, you know? We cling to the personal. Here we go. Let's bring it down. Exhale. Take it down. And let's go here. Actually, let's not. I want to just bring something in before we start a little more movement. Um, yeah, take a strap and place it over one of your shoulders. Bring that same arm up thusly. And take a hold of the elbow up there. And we're breathing in, just as we pushed down through these pelvic bones, you're breathing in up here. Bone, the ribs the ribs, and then there's the spine. And if, the, if you're in the spine, in the thick of the spine, you're not gonna be pushing anything forward. You wanna keep the thick of the back spine there, this back notochordy spine, full through the lumbar in there, full through the thorax. Inhale, arm is coming down. Exhale, spin it around behind you. And you can climb your hand up. You can hold your, your fingers or the strap and breathe. Ujjayi breathing. Full inhale and full exhale. Full inhale. Ah, oh, full exhale. Full inhale. Lengthening the breath, exhale. 
deep breath in. And with your exhalation, releasing, feeling what you're doing as you do it, all the stuff. Other side, the arm comes up, hold the strap and hold your elbow. Plant down with your pelvic bones and your legs and your feet. Allow your ribs to move like feathers, like little feeler feathers opening out individually. Keep the space, especially right at the thoracolumbar curve where we would tend to push forward. We would, because we feel like we want to open the chest. Just keep it full back there, that'll open. And then let's bring this around, inhale. And as you're exhaling, the back of your hand is on your, your body. You slide up and you hold whatever is easy. And breathe again. When you're working with the limbs, we've done some legs, we're doing some arms and shoulders, thoracic region. When you're working with the limbs, you feel maybe it's a little different. The embodied sensations may be a little different. Then we go to, when we go to the core, look for it. All right, and let's bring it around and take it down. All right, that'll help us now in some of what we're going to do, having freed up this upper body movement a little bit. I'm using the chair. If you like, you'll use the chair. I'm going to move it forward this way. From the arches of your feet through the inner legs to the center of the pelvic floor to the crown of the head. Not a line, but a, a tube, a channel of space. Exhale and release your arms down. We're going into a lunge. As you're inhaling, big reach out and up. We're not in a hurry. As you're exhaling, here we go up, out, and over. It's a long journey. As you're inhaling, yield into earth, elongate this core, and with an exhale, step your right leg back, turn the toes under, and if you're on the chair, you're fine, or the floor, your blocks, keep breathing, and then pushing, let you put heel back and then heel forward, and find that push going right up through your head. So you're not lifting up and lifting your chest, something like this. You're actually in neutral, and you're pushing right through your head. You see that? There's that core again. Keep breathing. Be strong. How can you be strong and soft in the legs here? Little resilience. All right, and then push off. We're gonna step forward, push off, step up. Wave out, inhale. And pour down, exhale. And swinging the ischial tuberosities forward to rise up, inhale. And exhale. Arms release, do nothing, and then inhale, palms open, and exhale, Anjali Mudra. Into the earth you go, big reach up with arms, inhaling, and exhale. Same thing, only left side, inhale, slide out, and exhale, step the left back, and feel the supports. Now, do you have a tendency, I do, 
You probably do too. Do you have a tendency to kind of sag someplace in your spine or harden? Just check it out. Soften it up. Feel what it offers. There may be no, more not knowing in there than there is knowing. Like who knows the answer to these problems? Basically nobody. You can't answer problems on the level of the problem. You've got to go under it. That's what yoga does. We go under it. We find this inside. All right, take that push to your head. Push off, step forward, wave out, inhale. And exhale, pour it down. And the pelvic floor rises and you draw life in. Inhale, reach out and up. And exhale, beautiful. Let's take a lower lunge. As you're inhaling, big reach. And as you're exhaling, big pull. All the way down, right leg comes up, inhale, exhale, shoot it back the same way, only this time yield your back knee to the floor. Take your left hand to your thigh or keep both hands on your chair. If the hand's on thigh, inhale and reach up. Little bit of lengthening and not crunching but sliding the tensegritus structure of your adult spine, which developed from the nodal cord of your original growth. So beautiful. Now you're gonna come back forward, inhale. As you're exhaling, straighten the back leg with hands on chair. Straighten the back leg, and then bring your left hand to your thigh, your right hand will stay on the chair or the floor or your blocks and turn open. So you're twisting toward the front leg and breathing one. Ujjayi. Where do you tend to harden? I've got a spot. Where do you tend to shear across your spine? Let it be more open. more spacious. We shear in places we don't want to feel. It's effective. We don't feel there when we shear. Let's not do that. And then turn back. Inhale. Both hands down. Push off. Step forward. Wave out. Pour down. And you're supporting your back and your spine by swinging the ischial tuberosities, the buttock bones forward to come up, reaching for the lengthening and Anjali Mudra. Other side, inhale, big reach. Keep the fluidity of your ujjayi breath going, breath by breath. Exhale over, bend knees a lot, inhale, and shoot your left leg back, exhaling. Move, feel what you're doing as you do it. The left knee goes down, right hand to thigh if you're doing it that way, and inhale and come up. Remember the stuff we do about yielding the deep belly into the spine back there in the lumbar? That's similar, but it's not this. This is actually from, from the initial spine, from the nodal. lengthens and it condenses, but it doesn't shear, it doesn't across. One more breath. Inhale, support, exhale, coming forward, placing hands. Ready, be strong and soft. Turn the toes under, straighten the back leg. Left hand is on the chair or the floor. Right hand to thigh, take a full inhale, and when you turn, turn around that tensegritus spine toy. And you just imagine it right inside your body, and you turn around that.
you keep the spaces of the balls there between on the ten secretus toy, keep the spaces between those the balls which are rep uh, <laughs> represent the bodies, the vertebral bodies, the space of oh, the discs and the connective tissues surrounding. Here we go. Come on back, face forward, push and step, wave out, inhale, and pour it down, exhale, and then rise up. And exhale. Good. Uttanasana, simple standing forward bend. You do it with the chair or not. I'm going to show this one not with the chair. So you're going to take your hands onto the pelvic bones and heel toe your feet apart about hip distance. Push into the earth. So with your hands on your pelvic bones, feel the weight of the bones. And then as you feel the weight of the bones, feel the lack of weight in the core and let it rise up. Inhale and peek up at the top. As you're exhaling, come up out and over. I'm yielding my belly in and lengthening through the thing, the toy. And then inhale, you wave out. And you don't have to go down far, but you can go down as far as you like, as long as you keep this spaciousness in the spine. No shearing force. That's a shearing force. If it goes like that, it shears. The bones come together. We want it to be a nice, long, spacious flexion. So you can be on the floor if that works in your back, or you can be on the chair. Pulse and widen the bones of your feet. Keep that freedom in your feet. Their relationality with the earth. And up through the arches of the feet, feel the empty channel. Arches, the space between the inner legs and the inner legs. The inner legs right up into the center of the pelvic floor. Pulse the pelvic floor will come halfway up. Inhale, pulse the pelvic floor up. Exhale, let it all lengthen and soften. And then inhaling, come all the way up, reaching. And Anjali Mudra again. Parshvu Tanasana. So that's the one where we step back. I'll be stepping back with my left first. It's this one. We'll come out over the chair and elongate. All right, so again, from here, moving with the breath, allowing the breath to inform deeply inside of you. Inhale and exhale, stay right here. Reach out and up, inhale. So it's difficult for your arms, you just reach up a little bit, it's fine. Exhale forward, bend your knees a lot once you're down here. And as you're inhaling, curl your left up and as you're exhaling, shoot it back. Spin on the foot to take the heel down toward the center of your mat. Yield and push into the earth with the front leg, straightening it a little or a lot. And exhale, elongate over your chair, any amount. And you're just mindful of keeping the space in your in your spine. This can be very helpful for those of you who tend to be super rounded here in the upper back. You see what I'm doing? This is a pushing, a shearing across the spine, whereas this is a nice long, and then I can flex from there. It's quite different. Mm -hmm. Now, with an inhale, bring yourself back to neutral in your spine, and then spin the back leg, push off, step forward, wave out, inhale. Take your time, exhale. Feel what you're doing as you do it, inhale, and exhale. Stand, do nothing, and feel what you've got. 
Ready again. Inhale for the other side and exhale on Jelly Mudra. <coughs> As you're inhaling, rising up and exhaling, taking it down, catch, heel. Go deep into the left, curl your right up, inhale and shoot it back. Articulate the foot. Feel the spreading of the toes and the ball of the foot as you descend down through the heel. Wave out with an inhale, pelvic floor rising, and exhale. Take it over. Be a sleuth in there. Be your own teacher. It's like, what do I feel? Huh, what, what is that? Can I breathe the there? Where in your body do you feel a sense of chronic liveliness? Look for it. It's in the soft, strong, and breathing parts of you. We all have it. It's not reserved for the flexible or the fit. We all have it. The chronic breathing parts of you. All right, inhale, come up a little. And exhale, turn the foot, push off, step forward, way out, and pour it down. Rise up, and exhale. And standing in Tadasana, I'm going to um, show this next part with a block. We are coming into Prasarita Padottanasana, which is just that nice wide leg standing forward bend. So you can take the block or the chair right in front of you and step out nice and wide. And have your feet, sometimes we'll say, turn the feet in. Well, if that's very comfortable for you and your hips and your knees and so forth, that's great. And if not, turn them out a little bit more. And then plant down. And plant down with this pulsing, see how I'm moving. I'm planting not by saying, I'm hoping for a get grounded. I'll do a lot until I'm grounded. No, I'm coming into relationship with the earth. Ah, there it is. And then my hands on pelvic bones, and then pushing into the earth to straighten. Inhale, wave up. And you can stay there a moment. Keep the breath moving. And with an exhale, you come up, out, and over. It's the same thing. Don't allow your spine to overflex. You can bend your knees if you like, bring your hands to the block or the floor, and exhale, come over your legs, hands to the floor if you like, or your chair or your block. Keep moving. And rhythm two. Three, play with it. How are you breathing? And five, two more breaths. comes the last exhale, yield deeply into the earth, and as you're inhaling, bring your hands either to your pelvic bones or your legs and come halfway up. Wait for it. Bring your hands to your belly, and with an inhale, open your arms like big wings soaring over the earth, and then push into the earth, way down, way down, way down to rise up, inhale. And exhale, we'll heel toe back together, and if you like, you can jump. Uh, 
All right, Anjali Mudra, heel down, and we'll step out again. And spinning. So one leg and pelvic half is spinning out. It's gonna be triangle pose. And the back leg spins in. We plant those ischial tuberosities down. And you're in Anjali Mudra facing straight forward. Here's my spine. Straight forward. Pulsing, not static, not hard, not like wood. Pulsing with space and fluid. All right, and then to come into Trikonasana. Bring your right, left hand, whatever it is, mirroring me if you are, onto the belly and reach out and up with the opposite. So the arm that is toward the front leg is going out and this hand is allowing you to facilitate a rippling rolling open of the spacious core. So it's a rippling rolling open of the space. Who cares how far you go? It doesn't matter. Hand on the floor, you might get too interested in that and overpower this inner inquiry. You can let it move a little bit. It's still trikonasana. Trikonasana isn't one place. It's all these places of inquiry. It's intelligent and focused inquiry. It's not just like, oh, I'm going to come into Trikonasana and wave around. Like, oh, yeah. No. You can do that too, but that's not what we're doing right now. Cave of the mouth up at the top of this is a big key. So as you're coming up, lift up through the cave of the mouth. This will elongate the core. Inhale, you come up. And exhale, as you're rolling to the other way with the peripheral body, your core body's moving around, but it's not being compressed. You see? And then I go down through this side, back through this side, so that my core body can just spin and open. Are you breathing? <laughs> Let's do it again. Exhale. And inhale. So when I say things like that, often I'm talking to myself. Are you breathing? What are you doing? And then bring the hand here. Spin. You're spinning. I'm spinning open all the way up. It's up here, the cave of the mouth, soft palate, replacing, replacing, supporting the skull, cave of mouth, soft palate, pelvic floor, space spins, breathing. As you're inhaling, supporting periphery, central coming up, and exhaling, heel toe, and step and or hop, Tadasana. Utita Hasta, Padangustasana, which is the one where we, we are going to take a leg out, forward, and up. So listen to me, don't get, a, don't get scared. You can do this with the chair. So some of you are going to do it. Uh, actually holding your leg up and you can do the whole thing just like this. And many of us are going to now get a chair with perhaps blankets or bolster on it to raise it up to just the height that you, you want, you know? anything that works for you, I'll show it this way. 
and then yield down through your, I'm gonna yield through my right, I'm taking my left up. Feel free to mirror me if it helps you. Go down with the one, and the other leg comes up. And take it out. So if you're here, you're just extending, holding the big toe. It's a challenging posture, or you're resting it right here, both hands on, on pelvic bones. Or one hand holding toe. And breathe with it. So if you're in this one, on the chair, reach up with both arms. And keep the space there within the center of the pelvic floor. Stay with me. Exhale, so if you're holding the toe, come out over it, that's great. Or if you're not, come up out and over your leg on your chair. Two breaths. Good, and then yield into the earth through the standing leg. Inhale, come up, and release the leg. Thread it into the earth. Thread it down. Stand on it, and we'll go to the other leg, either holding the toe and extending. Some of you will do it. And then others, hands on the two pelvic calves. Nice and easy. So you're feeling the, the neutrality that can remain in the spine here, even as the peripheral body's doing other things. Reach up. Stay active in the toes, the arches of the feet, the inner ankles, all of it. Keep breathing. And then here we go, up out and over, or drawing your leg into you, whichever place you are exploring right now. Yes, and then as you're inhaling, you rise back up, curl the leg into you, whoops, and then thread it down. Stay with me. We're going to twist. So this time, those of you using the chair are going to place your foot on the chair, and if you're using the leg, you're going to bring your leg out and change hands <laughs> to twist. Sorry. Change hands to twist open. I didn't come back. So my recommendation is to use the chair. But we can do it either way. All right, so we go down, down, down. And the first leg comes up. And then if you're on the chair like me, take your opposite hand, your long leg hand to the outside of the bent leg and bring this hand up to the chest. Open your arm as you turn and keep breathing. So we're exploring the spinning of this core while we continue to make space in it. Or not even make space. You have you allow space. You don't make it. You ready to come back? As you're inhaling, spin around that core. Let that bring you back. It's spinning. And then take the leg down. Wait for it. Other side. Down you go, and up the opposite leg. Hand goes to the thigh, straight leg hand goes to the bent or the up leg, thigh or foot, and you turn, and don't just turn your ribs, right? You're coming right from the center, and you're turning from the space. You can do this. It's very different from turning from the bones at the periphery, your ribs and so forth, and it's very different from turning from your spinal bones. You're turning through all of the connective tissue around the spine, the tube. 
that energetic tube that was once your initial channel of intelligence spreading, the notochord. All right, when you're ready, you bring it back around with an inhale. Don't turn the ribs. The ribs will follow. Turn from the center. Yeah. And release it down. All right. Take your, your chair, if you're using one, and put it away. I have a mess of my props over there. And you'll take one of your blankets for perhaps your head, if you like that. Have a block near you that you can grab when appropriate and, and a strap. All right, so we'll come down. We're going to elongate, as we always do, to the floor. Coming in and going down. Elongating to the floor. <coughs> By catching, you're catching the bones, the back bones of your spine. So you've got, remember your coccyx back there? That's the back of the tube. Okay, and then you roll on the sacrum. That's the back of the tube. And you get to about here. Use your arms to support because we're not about like trying to use the muscle right now. You're just looking in there into that spacious core. You've got the back of the sacrum. And then you've got your arms to kind of pulse and push to give your body the sense of space, not compression, space. Okay. And then start to elongate it down, not from hardening in your spine. Leave your core alone, let it be soft. Use your arms and the side bodies to elongate and let the core really float in there. I, many of you are going to really want to have a blanket under your head because, or even two blankets, because if your head is falling back like this, you have lost it up here completely. You want to be able to have your head in neutral. So one blanket, two, or none. You, you be the judge. Take one hand into the low belly and one into the solar plexus region. As you're breathing, as you're inhaling, at the initiation of the inhale, the breath sucks down into the back abdomen. Don't push up. It will suck down and wave up into the chest and wave down into the pelvic floor. So the breath is beginning to move through the length of this spacious core. Maybe you can get it right in the torso now. Maybe eventually you can start to get it all the way up. The breath moves through the whole body in this way right through the space. Now, draw your right knee into your chest. Hug it in, inhale, and with an exhale, slide your left leg out on the floor, inhale, and with an exhale, curl your forehead up towards your right knee, and keep breathing. Allow the breath to penetrate right in through that whole spacious core, along as much of it as you can feel. Lie back, inhale. You're gonna twist a little bit, so bend the extended leg just a touch. Hook your bent leg, foot to the knee, and then to twist, roll over. Don't straighten your leg, just roll over onto the outside of that left thigh, the long leg thigh, and open. A little bit of a challenge to that core, right? And a beautiful feeling because these supine twists create more space and length in that, uh, in that central core 
than any of the other yoga postures, I think. You'll feel it. So much space in there. It's a place where you can really sift the breath in through parts where perhaps you don't feel the core just as much. Maybe it's in the heart, or the thymus area, or the neck, or the palate. Maybe it's in the solar plexus, or even the pelvic floor. All right, here we go, coming back. So it's the same thing. Let it roll back, inhale. And as you're exhaling, even up on the floor, and both pelvic bones down, knees bent. Other side, inhale and exhale, draw left knee in. Up again, maybe behind the thigh, all things are fine. Inhale again and exhale, slide out. Even that should feel good, right? If you're paying attention, they're all it's all gonna be inner touch. Inhale, exhale, curl. So there's strength involved and there's softness. Soft, resilient strength. Personal reserves for action. Supporting self to act effectively. Inhale, come back. Bend the extended leg, hook the other foot behind the knee, and then rolling on the outside of the extended leg. You don't need to straighten it. Just roll on the outside of that bent knee. This is the way that you lengthen through the core. If you keep the leg even or something, you don't get as much length. This is lengthening through the core by allowing that lower leg to bend. Brings your core into a long spiral. Play with it. Usually the areas of the body where we find gripping are areas where there's something we don't want to feel. We don't want to think. We don't want to know. And there are usually good reasons for that, but sometimes that, those reasons outlive their usefulness. So we can inquire, do I want that? Oh, what if I soften that? Oh. All right, and as you feel complete in that, you'll inhale and come back. And you can straighten up on the mat again. Constructive rest yielding here. All right, let's take the strap on the right foot and extend the right leg up. Wrap your strap into your right hand. Wrap it so that you don't have to grip. It's actually wrapped around your hand, looped, and then wrapped. Take your left hand to your thigh, left thigh or left pelvic belly, and with an exhale, extend the leg out. Keep breathing. One, even and steady. Two. This core body is going nowhere right now. It's just resting at the center. Three. Your breath. Four. Five. Maybe. Doesn't matter. Inhale. Take your right leg out and up. And as you do, 
Spin with a soft, open mouth to the left with your gaze and your mouth, your head, left. Right leg out to the side and upward. Keep breathing. Collected back with an inhale. And as you're exhaling, curl up around it. Slide your left hand down your left thigh. Stay here. Let go the strap or the hold of your legs. Leg and reach your fingers toward the low end of your mat. Slowly release the leg out and down. Deep back body support. No compression through the center. And rest it. Draw both legs back up. And extend your left leg. Strap it. So the strap should be open. You place it around the ball of the foot. You press the ball of the foot into it. And then hold the strap with your left hand and wrap the strap around your hand. Then you hold the foot. Good. And right hand comes to thigh or hip joint. And exhale. Slide the right leg down. Deep <coughs> back belly. Soft open core. Three. and five all right as you're inhaling begin to journey that leg over to the left and upward and as you do softening through the mouth the cave of the mouth under your tongue your soft palate and rolling the mouth and the gaze rightward. Feel what's going on in the neck and in the heart region above the heart, upper thoracic region, center there. And then with an inhale, collect it back. So it's collecting back on both sides into the center. Release the strap. Reach your fingers toward your toes. Come up. And nice and easy. Whole body soft support. No real bracing. Just whole body soft support. And leg is coming down. And you rest. Good. Have your block. We're going to take a Vigri to Karani. So if you know shoulder stand and you're really happy to go into even a baby little shoulder stand here, be, be, feel free to do that. Otherwise, you can take your block and hold it either one of the three different heights and place it underneath your pelvis to rest. Now once down, scoot your shoulders under and toward one another, and then one at a time or both, bring your legs straight up. Alternately, you could just turn over to the wall and um, put your legs up the wall. But let's be here in a soft inversion Feel the downward flow of fluids in your legs. Feel it especially through the inner legs all the way to 
the pelvic floor. Like a fresh mountain stream down through the pelvic floor into the deep basin of your pelvis. Washing. Clear, crystalline, beautiful water. Washing. As the pelvis fills, the same washing comes up over the next waterfall through the thoracic region, the solar plexus, and down into the washing of the heart. Throat. Brain. And into the earth. All right, let's release. So if you're in shoulder stand, start to come down. And if you're in deep reach crowding, bring your feet to the floor. Lift your hips up off of your block. Remove it. And draw both knees into your chest. Little circles here. Curl up, and then roll over to one of your sides. We're going to finish with a short breathing before uh, Shavasana, so similar to what we have been doing about the space in the core and core body as personal support. Support, is before we can act, support gives us the ability to perceive clearly. And that's what we've been looking at. <clears throat> the space from which to perceive. The spaciousness, not the compressed ideas. Not the right, not the wrong, but the ability to feel the space. Chair is fine, rest hands on thighs, and then arranging the seated position from the space. If you like, allow the eyes to close and notice the fact that you're breathing. And then see if you can feel for the breath actually within this spacious core. Your breath may become quite soft now, that's fine. Allow that. We're gonna count. You're gonna count your breaths backwards from 10 to zero on exhalations, feeling for the breath itself in this core, nothing more. Counting breath backwards from 10 to zero on exhalations, feeling for the breath itself in the spacious core. So now is the time to begin by just noticing that you are breathing And then bringing in the count, exhaling 10. When you're finished, lie back, Shavasana. Mm -hmm. 